If you're working with text files in Python, it helps to have a library or module help you parse and process that text so you can start doing things with it. TextBlob is a great one to get started with, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install and start using TextBlob in a Google Collaboratory notebook. So let's get started. I've got a scene, let's see, here we go. So here's a notebook set up, and this is kind of a sequel to a previous video where I show you how to import text files into a Collab notebook. So I'm going to assume you already know how to do that. You can watch my video, I'll link to it in the description. Uh, but I'm going to do that and then start working with text blob and I've already set up this notebook with a couple of headers And I'm going to build this kind of out of order as you'll see once I start working in it So you can understand what text blob is doing as I work with it so I've already uploaded a file here birds of Australia text and I'm going to end up using text blob to parse that and then um, Understand what's in that file and start understanding the pieces of it which is what text blob can do so this is how we import text blob um, it's a slightly more complicated import line, and um, doesn't really matter why for this video. This, this is what you do to start with, and from text blob import text blob, and it just works, right? Or it seems to. Um, however, there are various parts of text blob that we're going to need, and text blob is set up in such a way that it doesn't install the parts we don't need until we need them, and some of those parts are very big, and so that's why you know. So it's something that won't happen until we actually uh, need it, and so let's let's use the parts that we need and then TextBob will prompt us to add some new things to it um, with some error messages that are going to be really helpful. So let's get into this part down here. So I've installed TextBob sort of, but it's incomplete. So I'm going to go down here and start using it and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to open that text file that I have already uploaded here. I can type back ah, on content birds of Australia. Text. Okay, so this is just this was method two from the earlier video, and this is just what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to open this up as this uh, text, uh, as this variable named text, and this is just a, a string at this point. Um, it's going to be very long. It's let's see, um, four hundred thousand characters, three four hundred three four hundred thousand three hundred eight characters long. Very very long. Um, I could split that into a list of words and do a little bit with it, but TextBob is going to do a much more sophisticated set of ways of splitting this, and it's going to be really helpful once we start doing that. So let's let's try TextBob. So to do this, I need to uh, first of all create what's called a blob object. Um, I'm going to name this one blob just to help myself remember what this is and I'm going to feed the blob with the text that I read from this file. So I'm going to say, try that again, make sure there's no errors. I usually like to run each cell kind of, even if I'm adding more to it, just kind of run it every time I add a new line just to make sure there are no errors. Um, the, the advantage of doing it that way is as you write it, once you write a line you get an error, you can immediately locate where the error started because it was that most recent thing you added. So far so good, right? Now, um, one of the cool things that uh, that TextBlob can do is it can tokenize this this whole string, this big long thing, and it can pull things out in different ways that are pretty smart. For example, if I wanted to get every sentence in this document, text blob can parse all of those sentences and then give it to me as a list of sentences and then I can work with it sentence by sentence which is pretty interesting and pretty useful so I'm going to try that and then this is actually going to trigger an error and then the error will show me what to do and I, I will I will do those things and then you'll see how to do it okay so uh, let's say I wanted to just print um, the 900th no, the, the 100th sentence of this um, so the, the sentences list is something I can access by using blob and then blob has various functions built into it but this is actually a function that's a list that gets produced by a function it doesn't matter um, so blob.sentences is where the sentences are stored um, actually let me go ahead and save this into its own variable I'll call it sentences equals blob.sentences and this is going to be my variable um, and actually you know I'm going to call it sentence list to even make it more clear so sentence list equals blob.sentences now this should probably create an error and it does good so what it's telling me in this error is that it's missing some things that I need to, to add. I need to import NLTK, and then I need to use NLTK to download this library or module or whatever it's called, uh, named punct, uh, which is the punctuation parser, I believe. So let's try it. So I'm gonna actually copy that, 
bit there. And up here where I installed text blob, I'm going to add a line to that. So in, in addition to importing uh, text blob, I'm also going to go ahead and import NLTK. So if I run that, now I've got NLTK. That wasn't the only error, so let me but let me run this again and see if that cleared that one error. So let's see. Um, well, it's still giving me that error, but it says, let me try downloading this and seeing, uh, seeing what happens. Okay, so now I'm going to NLTK, use NLTK to download Punked. Let's see if this goes better. Okay, so it does a little work in the back end and then just, it says it's done. The word true in this case means everything happened like it was supposed to and everything's fine. So let's try this, uh, this thing again, see if we can get a sentence list. And it looks like it worked, at least we didn't get any errors. That's how we would know it wasn't working. So let's see if we can now pull out one of these sentences. Uh, let's see, how about, just, we'll just print one. We'll just, the 100th sentence in this document is, uh, Gould and HC Richter, Dell et Lith. <laughs> Sounds like it's still part of the table of contents. That's kind of weird, but that's all right. <laughs> let's, do, let's do a more farther along sentence. The note is a loud piping whistle. Great, that sounds like something that you would say in a book of birds about Australia, so that makes sense. Notice though that this isn't just the sentence, this is giving it to me as a sentence object. A sentence object has various properties. We don't really need to get into those. Uh, let's just try printing it and seeing if it looks a little bit more, more natural. Yeah, now we're just, when we ask it to print it, it just gives us the text. We can access the text directly. Uh, I think it's, uh, it would be dot text or something, but in any case. Uh, now that's text blob. We can do a lot of other things with uh, text blob and uh, let me try the other one. This one may take a bit of processing because this is a pretty long document, but we've got sentences list here. Let's get a, yeah, let's try it. Okay, so tagged. Uh, I'm going to get a list of tagged words. So tagged words are going to be every word in this document tagged with the part of speech that text blob thinks it is. So that's going to be things like nouns, proper nouns, adjective, adverbs, and so on. Um, it does take a lot of work. Text blob has to work pretty hard to do this. So this may take it a, a little bit. But that's okay. I'm not using my own computer. I'm using Google's computer. And, um, you know, hopefully it'll be fine. Let's find out. All right. So once again, there's something missing. So let's see what's missing. It says I need to download NLK to NLTK's Averaged perceptron tagger. So let me copy this line and back up here where I imported NLTK and downloaded punct. I'm also going to add this line as well. So now I'm going to just run this. I'm doing it this way so that if I come back to this notebook, I know that these are the things that I need to run first before I run all these other things down here. So I'm kind of that's what I meant earlier when I said I was kind of building this backwards. So let's see. Now this may take a bit. Uh, like I said, so, okay, that wasn't too bad. Um, so now that that's hopefully worked, uh, I can look at tagged words in this list of tagged words and, and understand what part of speech it is, which could be useful for all kinds of reasons. Uh, let me just try it out here. Let's just take a look at tagged words number 5,000 and see what that is. So that's the word became, which it says is a VBD, which means past tense verb. There's, an, there's a, a code for different parts of speech and VBD means it's a past tense verb, uh, which obviously it is, but it's nice because now uh, Python knows that this is a past tense verb. I mean, I can look at the word became, I know what that is, but now Python knows what it is too. And if I want to use certain kinds of words in certain places in the poem I'm generating, now I know what they are. And uh, that's, that's great, right? Um, so I think this is probably all I will show you for this video just to keep things pretty short. So this is text blob. You can do a whole lot of other things with text blob like sentiment analysis. Um, but I think this is a good start for now. Um, and I think in the next video, I will show you how to use text blob and parts of speech to start building a poem. So that is how am I doing here on time? Okay, pretty good on time. Okay, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. That was cheesy. I don't know why I do that.